Uh, let's talk now. Who, uh, hands up, uh, this is for those of you watching on Tony Vision. <laughs> this is going to work. BBC.co.uk. Hands up here. Who, who used to smoke? Anyone who does smoke? Nope. Just me then. Yeah. Uh, right. Well, I, I gave up 20 odd years ago, so I'm not really a smoker now. But has the anti smoking message gone too far? Are smokers unfairly stigmatised? Are you tempted to boo them as you walk along the street and they're all smoking outside a, an office and all that? You walk through the cloud of smoke. Are you tempted to, to turn around and give them a filthy look or even boo them? Anyway, the University of York have issued a report saying they are unfairly stigmatised at the moment. It says characters like Frank Gallagher from Channel 4's Shameless associate smoking with antisocial behaviour and that non-smokers regard smokers as dirty, inconsiderate and weak-willed. So has the anti-smoking message gone too far? Do we unfairly stigmatise smokers? Are we targeting the people who are smoking rather than the fags themselves? 0500 909 693. Text us 85058. Do you feel guilty if you're having a fag? If you're having an honest, low-abiding fag these days, do you feel guilty? And be honest, have you judged smokers as you walk around the streets and they're all stood outside buildings? Let me know, 85058 is the text number. Simon Clark is director of the Smokers Lobby Group Forest. Hello, Simon. Oh, hi, Tony. And also with us, Labour MP Alex Cunningham, who introduced a bill banning smoking in cars when children are present. Hello, Alex. Hello, Tony. Uh, welcome to the programme. Uh, Simon, you first of all, do you think this anti-smoking campaign has gone too far? Yes, uh, undoubtedly, and uh, I'm delighted that this report has come out because I think it's long overdue that we need to highlight how intolerant some people have become to, to smokers. As it happens, I don't think the majority of people, I mean the majority of non-smokers, are that intolerant. I think the real problem um, is a small minority of very fanatical anti-smokers not all, of them, or, or, not all of them are anti-smokers. A lot of them are employed by the tobacco control industry to be anti-smoking. But I think a lot of the intolerance we see now towards smokers is driven by these professional anti-smoking fanatics. And also, I have to say, it's fueled by government and politicians like Alex Cunningham. Now, just I'll give you one example. We've obviously got the smoking ban. Now, the smoking ban was introduced because we were repeatedly told that passive smoking kills. We were told it kills 11,000 non-smokers every year without a shred of evidence to actually back that up. Now, inevitably, that was going to create uh, a lot of scaremongering, and it was going to alarm a lot of people. Then, since then, we've had publicly funded campaigns with slogans like, if you smoke, you stink. Now, for, to use public money... That's true, though, isn't it? generate that's hatred tr- that's towards true. a significant minority that, of the population but that's a fact, is Simon. absolutely wrong. But that's a fact, isn't it, Simon? Well, it, it depends how you look at it. I mean, well, I've it, smoked and I stunk. It's a well, fact. you maybe did, Tony, but I know lots of people who don't stink uh, simply because they smoke. I know a lot of... One of our supporters, for example, is the musician Joe Jackson, and he takes you know, great care of his, you know, of, of his personal hygiene, if you like, and he gets very annoyed when people assume that he's some sort of dirty, disgusting addict. Because, of course, yes, there are many people who are addicted to nicotine. That doesn't mean to say they are disgusting or they stink. And there are many smokers who aren't addicts at all. They actually enjoy smoking. And what we see in the media today and amongst all these tobacco control fanatics, they try and portray smokers to be people who... Are as you said earlier, weak willed, have okay. no control Let, over the habit of Let's whatever. bring Alex in then, because essentially you've called him a scaremonger and he needs to defend himself. Hello, Alex. Hello there. Um, well, I, I don't believe that there's any benefit in stigmatising uh, smokers at all. Uh, my argument has always been that we need to take people with us in, in trying to encourage them to do particular things. And over many, uh, many years, I believe, there was uh, the campaign in order to, to stop smoking in public buildings. And then it was pubs and clubs and restaurants. And, uh, you know, the whole, the whole uh, direction of the campaign was to persuade people and take them with it. And the majority of smokers, as well as non-smokers, agreed that these were good measures but uh, you know your, my colleague on the other line there uh, suggests that uh, you know there are various dirty tactics going on but uh, I can tell you of one of a uh, personal experience when uh, a former colleague of mine when I worked in public relations uh, he showed up uh, soon after I uh, was elected to Westminster to catch up with me according to uh, the, the note on his email and when he did turn up it transpired that he was there to represent the Tobacco Manufacturers Association so you know there's no ends to which uh, that particular industry will go to uh, to try and win the argument that smoking's not harmful. Simon Clark? 
Well, I, I don't know where that story was leading, frankly, because we certainly uh, don't deny there are serious health risks associated with smoking. But, for example, on the, uh, this, this particular article appeared in one particular newspaper today, and I'm now looking online at some of the comments uh, that have been posted as a result of that article. And these are just some of the comments. Smokers disgust me. Everyone knows that smoking is a trash behavior. Smokers are well, there's, disgusting there's no and dirty outcasts. There's, there's no doubt at all that, you know, people, uh, there are some nasty people out there and they're probably nasty to, to other people that do things that they don't like. And there's no benefit to stigmatizing, uh, as I said before. You know, we've got to let smokers do what smokers want to do. But it's also important for us to protect children from smoking. And my 10-minute rule bill was to ban smoking in cars with children present, where the, the concentration of smoke in a car can be 12 times greater, a tremendous health risk to children. And sadly, you know, that smell does actually go into the children's clothes. And that's not good for children. But can I come back on you, Alex, either. on that one? Because, look, we don't, we don't encourage or condone parents who uh, smoke in a car where children are present. We would like well, would to discourage my smokers bill, would you? doing it. We don't think would you we support need my bill? Hang on, can I finish? Can I finish? We don't think we need the heavy hand of the law to try and enforce what 84% of smokers are already doing. Parents who smoke don't need to be told by politicians such as yourself that they shouldn't smoke in a car with children because they're not doing it. Only a very, very small number of parents still do that. What about the 16% of children? What about the 16% of smokers who do smoke in cars with children present? What about those children? Don't they have human rights, the right to a a clean environment when they're travelling in a car? Well, the problem is that these anti-smoking... Um, fanatics take it so far. I know, for example, one very high-profile anti-smoking campaigner who actually says uh, that if a parent lights a cigarette in a car with a child present, that child should be allowed to report his parent to the police. He he calls it child abuse. Is that the sort of language that we, we want to see? Because that's the sort of thing that breeds intolerance. And let me tell you this, I've actually, we've actually got a comment on our website at the moment that says, I hope you die of cancer. Now, when we did a mail shot to 18,000 councillors a few years ago, a Bristol councillor actually scrawled on the, uh, the letter that we'd sent him, I hope you die of cancer. We brought, we brought it to the attention of the local media, right. and they laughed it well, off. They thought, said, oh, he's a bit okay. of a character. I, so would you condemn actually, that type of language? We're actually on the same page. We don't believe, I don't believe either, in treating people in that way. What I want to do is to take them with the argument. I think the, health argument, the health argument is quite clear. Last week I, I visited the, uh, the, transporta- the transplantation unit at the Freeman Hospital in Newcastle, and they were telling me of the, the patients that they are waiting for new lungs and new hearts, and all, a lot of them because of respiratory diseases brought on by smoking. Yes, so right. I, think no, we, del- I think we can win the argument by that, putting yeah. the health argument to people. I'm Guys. delighted that you're saying that. I'm delighted that you're saying that. But look, we're not denying that there are serious health risks associated with primary smoking. But you say that you know, this is driven by the health arguments. The health arguments on passive smoking, for example, are the jury is totally out. All right, Simon, I just, I just, Simon, I, Simon people, bear with me, Simon. I just want to call the so time out here, Simon, because I need to speak to Patricia, who's, who's on the line now. Hello, Patricia. Hello. Hi. Now, Patricia, you've been smoking for 44 years. Is that right? Yes, from the age of eight years old. From eight? From eight years old, yes. I started about 1967, 68. Right. Now, do you feel stigmatised? Absolutely, absolutely stigmatised, and I feel that this is deliberate. In what way? Well, there's a whole denormalisation campaign for a start that, you know, promotes smokers as malodorous, which means smelly, smokers as employment liabilities, which means that they want them to be sacked from their jobs, smokers as unattractive housemates and bad neighbours, you know, this whole... Who's who's portraying this image? The ethical issue about smoke drift is aimed to sort of set neighbours against smokers, etc. So, you know, and all this started with the smoking ban, the public smoking ban, and quite frankly, it was totally unnecessary. There was always, you know, market voices were sorting out the choice issue the majority of places were non-smoking because the majority of people were non-smoking Patricia who's who's doing this and cruel to to throw smokers out of public places like that who do you blame who do you blame for this Patricia well actually I I I blame the anti-smoker industry and it has become an industry actually you know and here I hear you know Alex Singleton and um Simon Clark arguing there you know about Alex Cunningham or the anti-smoking industry or whatever I'm actually a consumer and I'm caught in the middle of this 
you know, I'm an adult now, and even as a child, frankly, you know, the bullies in the playground were shouting cancer stick at me. You know, how far has this debate moved on that we've now got government ministers saying the same thing? It's, 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 it's frankly morally repugnant. But isn't smoking at eight morally repugnant as well, Patricia? Well, you know, in 1967-68, things were different. I could go to my corner shop and I could ask for a packet of cigarettes and the only safeguards were the shopkeeper said to me, are these for your mum? And I used to say yes and she used to say OK. Now, you know what? The very, very good work of tobacco control ensured that that certain safeguards were put in place. But on the one hand, Patricia, hang on, you, you're blaming... Being the... able to go into the shop like that. You... Unfortunately, over-regulation All is right. actually backing the black, black market, which means that my grandchildren are now in far more danger from man with a bag who sells cheap, contaminated tobacco on estates. OK. You know, it's, it's just gone too far and, frankly, you know, it's counterproductive. All right, Patricia, thank you very much indeed. Even I've run out of time there. I was going to make a point, but I've run out of time. Uh, thank you very much to Simon and to Alex. Lots of you trying to get in touch on smoking. We'll take some of your calls shortly, 850 or give us a ring, 0500 909 693.